everyone. Okay, so obviously a large portion of this chapter is spent on Sabo recounting the events that transpired in Marijua. And honestly, this is definitely Oda get, where Oda gets a little cheeky and sneaky with it. Because even though nothing, like, you could argue nothing really all that major actually was revealed in this chapter. Or at least nothing we didn't already know happened. But in, the, in that same vein, even though nothing major was actually revealed... Oda still perfectly set the stage in a way where we still, you can still say we still know exactly what happened. Which is to say, in, in the, like, d during the whole raid that happened on Marie Joie, and in the process, I almost guarantee Sabo got mixed up with Cobra. Like, after, after, after making, after, after, I think, possibly, like, making an attempted rescue from, uh, attempted rescue on, for, for, in order to save Cobra from an obvious fallout with the meeting with the other stars, I almost bet, I almost can wager that both, that both Cobra and, both Cobra and Sabo came face to face with Eam. Now, whether or not it was actually Eam who directly killed Cobra, I can't say with certainty because there are quite a few players on this board who could have been, done the deed on, deed in order, but, uh, but I am still, uh, maybe on order from Eam and the other stars, but, Give, again, given the way that we see Salvo trying to trying to not give in to the fear, just the the look on his, the look of fear on his face that he has in a lot of a lot of panels in this chapter, it has me thinking that yeah, it was probably Eam or Eam who did it, or hell, it it could have even been like the Holy Knights. Like that, that's another thing is that Dragon brings up the Holy Knights, so I wonder if it, it was definitely it was probably one of the Holy Knights on order from Eam, maybe who did it, but. Yeah, um, but, like, I'd say I'm, but I'm, I'm still saying likely, so yeah, I'm still saying that it's likely Eam is still the likely candidate. And not only that, but you can just tell just the way Sawa is acting throughout this chapter that he and, and likely Cobra did in fact get a front row seat to the kind of power Eam possesses, which, yeah, because it's confirmed this chapter Cobra is dead, so knowing the man as well as we do, I almost can wager you. I can almost wager in his dying moments, he likely asked Sabo to save, to, to, in order to save Vivi, leading to the events they are now, leading Dragon, the revolutionaries, and likely Vivi being the only ones who be who believes that that Sabo is innocent of this. Now, although at the same time, with the whole conversation between Vivi and Luchi, how with the whole how the whole conversation between Vivi and Luchi played out in this chapter, it does make me wonder if Luchi might have beat Sabo to the punch and that he was the one who actually who actually saved her or at least he or at least he Luchi in some way he'll help 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 produce in the facilitation of of Vivi's escape or some way I'm I'm again I'm still thinking Sabo for the most part saved her but if it, if Luchi played a part I mean I wouldn't be surprised stranger things have happened especially especially with how we how we see Luchi characterized now it it's possible um, and, yeah, obviously, one of the big, again, as I said before, one of the big reveals, though, is that with, with the raid on Nogashima, with the raid on, sorry, with the raid on, uh, on Marie Juan, how it played out, Dragon does bring up the idea that now, now that we're, now that we're at this point, there's a possibility that, that the, that the Celestial Dragons are likely in order to mobilize the Holy Knights. So, that's, that's an entirely new problem we gotta deal with, and... Yeah, unlike the like like so many things having to do with the celestial dragons, I doubt those motherfuckers are pushovers. Like the the, the way Oda has already built these these holy knights up, it's like yeah, I I think that's just gonna bring a whole new set of problems for for the revolutionaries. Honestly, that they don't realize is gonna happen. And the, the like it's like the holy knights, the, the way they're built up by dragon, he seems to genuinely. He seems to be the only thing that he genuinely fears about the world government, just just from this chapter. So, yeah, what th th these guys are probably a big deal, to put it lightly. Um, I I also like how, but even more than that, I also like how we see Sabo's perspective in this chapter. That even though he's clearly lying and putting and putting on a brave face about being labeled as Cobra's murderer, you can tell he feels the need. To do so, just to just to see this, just to see the, the revolutionary's goal to his end, and he'll and just he won't he'll want he's wanting to worry about the about the logistics of innocence his innocence later. But you can't tell it is legitimately tearing him apart, which 
not gonna lie, it does give me red flags, but at the same time, with all the times I have, I have thought Sabo's gonna die at this point, I feel like with the way Oda loves his patterns of storytelling, I am also finding it harder to believe we'll actually see him suffer the same fate as Ace, despite how many comparisons to Ace, despite the comparison of the Flame Emperor, Ace, that is made to Sabo in correlation to Ace. And one one thing I one thing I also really liked is how this chapter did give Dragon's perspective on Cover's death. That yeah, as much as he is considered an international criminal who started uprisings against the government across the world, he did hold admiration and respect towards Cobra for being one of the few world leaders understanding what it means to actually lead a country, even if those methods are considered unorthodox or not in the norm by so many others, other leaders who treat their citizens like shit. So it's it's something we... we and it is something in this respect we already known about Dragon, but it's nice to get that perspective to know he does have respect for the kind of leaders like Koba and Riku, which in itself I think gives a new pers an interestingly new perspective why he ordered Koala and Saba to go to Dressrosa, which was he which was he, he did actually have res much like Cobra, he did have respect for, for pretty much Riku and he wanted to see if nothing else he wanted to see him back in power. So it's it's interesting in that respect too. And uh yeah, obviously, the last thing to talk about is the absolute chaos of a flashback with the Celestial Dragons in absolute panic as Marie Joie is under fire, which, personal side note, gave me nothing but absolute joyful bliss. Like, just seeing the Celestial... everything about the Celestial Dragon's life just crumble around them, that is just pure joy. I loved it. I love seeing those assholes finally suffer. And... While that happens, of course, we have Katasu facing on facing against Fujitora, and and morally morally like facing off against Ryokugyu, which honestly, if I did have one complaint about this chapter, more of a nitpick, I guess, is I wish we could have gotten perspective on what Fujitora was thinking during this time, this during this whole thing, but. I guess it wouldn't be the best to do here, and I'm sure there are many different avenues in which he would is probably likely to explore that. That, and just what 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 Fujitora was thinking at that time, which like Odo is kind of one of those guys. He's always got like a place on on the game board for for all these characters. So I think Fujitora he's not likely to leave Fujitora behind with that. Like he is going to give perspective on what Fujitora was thinking during that time, just not here probably. Um, also, at, also, I just gotta say, at this point, Charlos has got to be the most brain-dead fucktard of a Celestial Dragon I have ever seen. Like, of all the Celestial Dragons, Charlos is just the absolute biggest dumbass, dumbass motherfucker I have ever seen in my life. Like, or at the very least, the guy's a mermaid fetishist. That's the only way I can explain this shit, because the fact that he's still... A, Apparently, from what I understand of, of events, the fact that he's still going after Shiro Hoshi long after he got fucking smacked around by Miosgard, and even while all this shit is going on, like, I, it's one of those things where I almost admire the tenacity of the, of the asshole, but I still gotta dock points for utter stupidity. And the fact that Roswell tagged along makes it even worse. Like, honestly, as much as I hated her holding Kami at gunpoint, it forced me to leave the, 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 the sister, what's her name? I think it was Sharia. Like, Sharia has. Sharia, the sister, Charles' sister is probably the only one with a functioning brain in that family at this point. Like, seriously, what the fuck is up with these two idiots specifically? Like, goddamn. Like, I, I, know, I know the Celestial Dragons aren't the smartest. They're the dumbest. They're, they are dumb asses to begin. They're dumb, dumb ass greedy assholes to begin with. But Charles, he takes that shit to a new level. Like, Sharia is looking like the most, the smartest one in, in that family right now. And it's... I, 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 my, my, my common sense just can't handle a character like Char Charles. Okay, that's, that's kind of, I guess, the point I'm getting at here. Um, moving on from that, though, it's during the whole raid that we get confirmation as well that, yeah, it isn't just Luchi and Kaku. All the rest of CP9 have become agents of CP0, which, if you watch the recent movie, Bluno joining isn't surprising, but the one that, the one that did... 
But the one that did uh, take me off guard is Fukuro. Like, full disclosure, I could barely take the guy seriously as a CP9 agent, so seeing him as part of CP0 is even more hilariously stupid and really just makes me question the hiring standards of Cypher Pole even further. But, uh, yeah, guys, that's pretty much all I got for this review. If you enjoyed the video, like, comment, subscribe, put me on Twitter, analyst, crunch roll, be sure to notification bell, hit the subscribe button, and share the video. And, guys, Dark Night of Night, signing off. Later, everyone.